so far we have created this account data type that consists of first name, last name, username, and password. We created two custom rules. One is a report definition and another one is the data page. And both of these rules have something called parameters. We have value one and value two. Value one is for the username and value two is for the password. The purpose of these parameters is to check in the database if there is a record that matches these values. So if we were to see this as a query to the database, our report definition will make a query similar to this. So we are going to select the first name, last name, username, and password from the account table where the username is equal to value one and the password is equal to value two. In this video, we are going to implement these rules in our case type where we will have a username and password field. And to do this, we will need help from a validate rule to check if we have a match. So let's remember where we are at. We have two stages, initiate reservation and authentication. In the first stage, we have one process, plan reservation, and it consists of three steps. Select to tell, then we select rooms, and then we show the initial summary to the user. After this, we want the user to authenticate. So in the first process of the second stage, we have a login screen. Here, if the username has some credentials, they will enter them and then they will proceed to the next stage. We still don't have the next stage. But if they don't have some credentials, we want to have the option to register and create a username and a password. If that's the case, they will go to the next process, sign up. Here, the user will need to enter their personal details, create their credentials, which are username and password, and then we are going to show the information about the account that was created. Now, in these last two processes, we will need to check some things in the database. In the login, we will need to check if the username and the password are correct, if we get at least one record that matches. In the sign up, we will need to check if the username is available. So for example, if the user enters a wrong username and password, we will need to show an error message telling them that the username or password are not correct. Similarly, in the sign-up process, when they enter the credentials, if the username is already registered, then we will need to show an error saying that the username is already taken. So that's what we are going to work on. We are going to work on these two validations in the login and in the sign-up. In this section, when clicking the submit button, either one of two things will happen. If the sign up checkbox is checked, we will proceed to the next process within this stage. If it isn't, we want to validate if the username and password are correct. Let's start by opening the flow action of our login step. One quick way to do this is by using the live UI. Simply select any element in the section and a level above, find and open the flow action. You could also open it from the App Explorer. Here, I'm going to create a new validate rule where I will use the data page we created to check if the record matches. Let's name it validate credentials. So in property, I'm going to select the account page username so that our error are, is displayed in the username and in conditions we need to. The first one is going to be, we need to check if the sign up is not checked. And the second one, 
is going to be if the account is not found. Here I'm going to use a when condition and the when condition is going to be named account not found. Let's go to the advanced tab and here I'm going to change the function. I'm going to use expression evaluates to true and I'm going to open the expression builder. So how do we use the data page that we created? So remember that our data page has two parameters and we want to access some properties from this page list. The property that we want to access is px result count. We want to check if the result is equal to zero that will mean that no record was found. To use the data page, we need to reference the ID of the data page. And then in between square brackets, we need to use the parameters and then we can access the property with a dot and the name of the property. So let's start with the parameters. The par parameters is value one and value two. And the values that we're going to pass are in your account page. username and password. And what is the property? It's px result count. And we want to check if this is equal to zero. Here we can test. So let's say username is going to be equal to Danny learns Pega. And the password is password123. And as soon as I enter the correct credentials, this is going to evaluate to false. So if this is true and this is true, then the message is going to be displayed. I want the message to be incorrect username or password. Now, the next thing is that I want to also check here in the sign up if the username exists. So, for example, we don't want a new user to be created with the same username. And also here, we want to check that the password is the same as the field in confirm password. So, let's open the flow action. I'm going to name it validate sign up credentials.
So one of the validations is going to be on the username. I'm going to use a function that is called property reference has a value. Here, because we are going to use this account default data page, we only need to check if that username returns a value. So the data source here is the lockup and the structure is page. So let's run this. The parameter that it requires is the username. So if I enter a random username, I should not get anything back. But if I enter a username that exists, I will get some values back from that username. So in this case, to use this data page, the, the ID of the data page is the account. The parameter is only one, is username. And the property that we want to check if it has a value, it can be any property that you want. I'm going to use username. So once again, it's going to be from our account page, the value that we want to pass. And if it has a value, that means that the username is already taken. The next thing that I want to do is to check if the password and the confirmed password are the same. Also, I want to make sure that the username and passwords are required. So I'm going to open the section and just make both of these fields as required. Don't forget to save your changes first. So that is pretty much it for this video. In the next one, I'm going to start talking about flows and flow actions. I'm going to fix some of the issues that we have with this current case type, and we are going to introduce some new shapes in our processes. So thanks for watching. See you in the next video.